13 through 15. And as you give you time to find out, you, you want to say welcome, stop at family, family, God bless you, uh, still miss you, a few more weeks we'll see you soon, a few minutes, not a few minutes, but a few, a few days, a few minutes, wow, uh, a few, a few days for us to see each other in person. But I do want to say uh, good to see you, welcome to you, stop at family, family. Uh, to our viewers, also welcome to you as well to this uh, Wednesday night Bible study. God bless you. Again, we want to look at 1 John chapter 2, uh, verses 13 through 15. We're going to title this, 13 and 14, we're going to title this, Their Spiritual State. Their Spiritual State. Verse 15, uh, we'll start off. Do not love the world. 15 will start off with do not love the world. But 13 and 14, I want to talk about their spiritual state. 13 and 14, their spiritual straight state. Uh, 15, do not love the world. And 15 will go down to a few more verses after that, but we want to deal with just 15 today, this evening. Um, before you get into verse 13, just to do a, 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 a brief review. Last week we talked from uh, uh, verses uh, 10 through 12, uh, talking about uh, love. He who loves his brother is in the light, and there is no cause or occasion of stumbling in him. Uh, verse 10 just talks about authentic love, true love, and when one loves truly, they are in the light. But in verse 11, he says this, that, but those who hate his brother are in darkness and walk in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So you see one who's walking in light, verse 10, because he who loves his brother, it walks in light, and there's no occasional cause of stumbling in him. And then he who hates his brother is in darkness. Uh, he walks in darkness. He's even in darkness until now. And then verse 12 just talks about, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for my name's sake. So basically talking about love. Those who say they love but really don't love uh, when they don't really love, they're walking in darkness. Uh, they, 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 they don't even do, they so much in darkness, they don't know where they're going. In verse number 11, they don't know where they're going. So just a brief synopsis to take you back to just those three verses of the last week. But we're going to get into 13 through 15 this evening. Let's look at it. And I'm reading again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Uh, reads as such, I write to you fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you little children because you have known the father. 14. I have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's the, there's a few nuggets. I won't hold you long, but I want to pull out a few nuggets in these three verses of scripture. Again, I want to go back to my title. Uh, their spiritual state, 13 through 14. Their spiritual state. Verse 15. Do not love the world. Let's dig into verse 13. Their spiritual, spiritual state, spiritual state. Uh, that, that's saying something right there. Their spiritual state. He says this. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him 
who is from the beginning. I want to stop right there before I read it. Because watch this. And verse number 13, and also, well, let's deal with 13, 13 first. Verse 13 is broken down into three parts or three sections or three stages. I want to say it again. Verse 13 is broken down into three parts, three parts, three stages, or three states. Let's deal with verse state number one. State number one says, I write to you fathers. Now, uh, my, my buddy's not here tonight due to some uh, things happening. Uh, so I got a, a help tonight. So you can still send in your comments because I'm going to ask a question right now. In verse 13, what does fathers mean in verse number 13? What does fathers mean in verse 13? What does fathers mean? I'll read it again. I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. Who is father in the text of verse 13? I'll give you a few minutes to think about that. I even allow you to cheat because you're going to try to go cheat anyway because I can't see you. <laughs> I'll give you a few minutes to even cheat. What does fathers mean in verse number 13? I'll give you a few minutes. I guess fathers will be first. 13. Are there any responses? There's one. There's one. What is it? Says, old Christians, those who have an intimate relationship with him. Oh, Christians. Who have an intimate relationship with him, the him being God. Well, I got that comment, but 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 you said old ones. Give me something else besides the word old. And I'll give you a few minutes of comment. Give you, I'll like you a few minutes for that. Old ones who have a relationship with him or the Father. What do you mean when you say older or old? What do you mean? And if, you, if anybody else has a comment, feel free to chime in and send your comment to us. You got it? Nothing? Okay. I will give you one more minute. Someone said aged. Aged. Okay. Now, watch this. I, I hear old, I hear aged. Okay, since I got a camera person here, I'm gonna allow the camera person to say out loud what she just said to me. Mature. She says mature. Somebody said season. Season. Okay. Anybody else? All right, watch this. I wanted you to really. Give me more on the old, or the, what's the other word? Age. I wanted to give, you, give more on the old and the age. Uh, so the Lisa, the camera person running the camera this evening, she says mature. And then someone commented and said season. Those are two words I was looking for. I like to you. Fathers. The word fathers mean most mature or seasoned ones. Because you have known him from the beginning. And when I say father, really I'm talking about Christ. Let me correct myself. Christ. You have known Christ from the beginning. You have, watch it. Uh, Brenda, did you say something about relationship? In one of the comments? Intimate relationship. Intimate relationship. You have had to have spent a lot of time with God to become mature and become seasoned. You have to have had some experiences with God. Mature. You have you have you have grown. You have grown from the beginning 
of your salvation until now in your, I guess I have to use that word, your age or your, I don't want to use the word old, I want to use your season time with God. I'll just use that. You have a comment? Okay. You have spent time with God. And that's what he's talking about. This is stage one. Or this is stage one. He's talking about different stages with God or with Christ. Different stages. This is the mature state. This is a person who has an intimate relationship with God or with Christ. Intimate. Spend time with him. Let me read my note here. There are three stages, and I just said that, of spiritual growth in God's family. Fathers, the most mature, have a deep knowledge of the eternal God. The deep knowledge of the eternal God. Now, now I want to pause here before I go further. Deep knowledge. Going back to what I just said earlier, they have spent a lot of quality time with God. An intimate relationship with God. They didn't take their, watch it, they did not take their relationship with God lightly. They cherished their relationship with God. They cherished their time with God. They spend quality time with God. They, watch it, they, they, as their time progressed, they learned how to tune stuff out so they can spend more time with God. Mm, let me say it again. They, through the course of time and being with God, they have learned to tune things out so they can spend more time with God. And in spending more time with God, God blessed them to be more mature spiritually. Let me go on. And you can add on in this portion of the text. Uh, the pinnacle of spiritual maturity is known, is to be, is to know God in his fullness. To know God in his fullness. As a mature person, you have had to have time with God. You have had not only watch this, you have not had to have five months with God. Let's go further. You did you you had to have more than five years with God. You had to have years beyond five. Let's go further. Beyond ten, beyond fifteen. You have had to have a many of years spending time with God, quality time with God will cause you be seasoned and mature. You can't be mature. You cannot be seasoned unless you have spent time with God and you have gone through some stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take myself anyway. Because you have spent time with God and you are seasoned now, you can help the next generation. Oh, that's good right there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for that tweet. Thank you for that tweet. Because you, you, you can help through your experience, through your time with God, through your uh, quality time with God, and how you have shut stuff off now that you used to. And so now you tell the next generation, this is what you got to do in order to grow in God and in order to mature in God. You have got to shut yourself off. That's good. From other things and other people so you can mature in God and be who God has chosen you and called and ordained for you to be. That's the stage one. That's the mature stage. You got a comment? No comment? They're just saying amen. Okay. <laughs> no? All right. Stage two. Watch this. Stage two. I write to you. He's just, look at, he's the same format. <laughs> the same format he uses to the mature, the father. He's the same format. Same format. I write to you because watch this. He says, I write to you. He distinguishes who he's writing to. Because in the first part, he writes to the fathers. I write to you, fathers. Distinguishes who he's writing to. Now, the second portion of the text, he says, I write to you, young men. Because you, watch it, because you have overcome the wicked one. Okay. Now I'm going to ask another question. <laughs> what does young men mean? In this portion of verse 13, we find out the fathers means mature or seasoned or aged persons. What 
and this young man meet in the text. I'll give you a few minutes for this one. I'll give you a few minutes for this one. What does the word young men mean in this portion of verse 13? Or in stage 2? Or state 2? Okay, comment? Go back. I must have threw some people off the roof when I said young man. I'll give, I'll give you one more minute. Yes, sir. These were confirmed disciples of Christ, persons who were well grounded in the truth. Okay, I'm going to add to that. Who were well grounded in the truth. That's what the comment was. I'm going to add to it, who are well grounded in the word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to connect, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to remember that. <laughs> well grounded in the truth. I'm going to try to come back to that because it, it, that comment is very important. It's a great comment. Kudos to the comment or the comment T or comment her. <laughs> Watch this. You got enough? Okay, go ahead. They have some experience, but not as much as those who have matured. Kudos to that one too. Because that's one of that's one of the things I got in my notes. Yes. Did you have another? Okay. I'm gonna connect with, try to connect with all of these. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. That means the devil. You have overcome the devil. Why? Young men here are those who, while not yet having matured spirit experience of knowing God and the Word and through life, do know what do know sound doctrine. Okay, let me explain that. They don't know the word totally, but they know enough sound doctrine to not get hooked with their bamboos. I haven't said it in a while. <laughs> Who have not been hoodwinked and bamboozled. They know enough sound teaching, sound doctrine, to not allow the evil one, the devil, to hoodwink them and bamboozle them. Watch this. They are strong against sin and error because they have woo, his word. And the one of the comments was grounded in the truth. Grounded in the word. What's the other one? Those who mature, they have matured because of the word. Watch it. They have spent time with God in the word. They have not got to where the mature person is yet. But they're mature enough to know what sound doctrine is and apply sound doctrine to their everyday walk of life. To where they are not hooked with their bamboo, tricked by the devil. And the only way you can be not be tricked by the devil, you gotta know some scripture. Mm. You got to know some word. You got to know the word. You got to know the word. And so these young men, you have overcome the wicked one. You have overcome the devil because you know sound doctrine, sound teaching. Now, I want to stay right here for a moment. He says, young men, uh, sound teaching, sound doctrine. It means you have, watch these two things I want to bring out here. You have been hungry. You have allowed yourself to set up under good teaching. <laughs> you have allowed yourself to set up under someone who is mature and who knows and can teach you sound doctrine and to the point where you are hungry for a sound doctrine. Not only that, but you are you're so hungry that I gotta have what's it, a spiritual fix. My fix is sound doctrine. I need the word because this world is messed up. I'm young, but it's messed up. I need sound doctrine so that I don't get tripped up or tricked and bamboozled and hoodwinked by the devil. I, I am hungry for sound teaching. Let me go further. 